Brian Christopher Kohlberger, chief suspect of the Idaho murders with an eerie background in criminal psychology. It is said that our thoughts shape our actions. Our emotions are vital when it comes to developing an identity. In fact, everything we choose to do in life is fueled by emotions, whether it's about making minor decisions or the choice of subjects for academic excellence. Emotions play a key role in defining the true requirements of our minds. In simple words, if I hate math, I will never opt for it as a major for my studies. Rather, I would prefer something else, which I love studying. Well, all you might agree that we all have multiple choices when it comes to the degree major, especially once we enter the research phase. We are only attracted by topics that intrigue our minds and only then can we give our best. The fact that emotions play a pivotal role in shaping the decisions of individuals works at a unanimous level for every individual. Sometimes the quest to explore our truest emotions in their most raw form takes us to our own pitfall. Something like that happened to a 28-year-old man and that changed not only his life but also deprived four innocent people of their lives. Before you start speculating, I would say to keep a paper and pen together with you because this case is multifaceted and has many ends to grab for an active investigation since the chief suspect is still under investigation by the authorities and the trial is still ongoing. So it would be an intriguing take to find out the heinous work of emotions which eventually led to four innocent deaths. Welcome to AF Crime the channel that brings you fascinating crimes all around the world. If you're interested in this kind of content, then this channel is for you. Make sure to like this video, click on the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated on our recent uploads. Now, let's get right into the video and investigate more about this case where the chief suspect left some conspicuous signs and much has left to be uncovered from the vivid layer of blood. The University of Idaho is a place full of youthful zest. Students come to join this prestigious institution every year with new dreams and aim to explore the professional world with the work of their unbeatable skills. The hope of an excellent future has made three friends develop into one soul. These three girls were Kaylee Gonclave, Madison Morgan, and Zana Kernoodle. Kaylee and Madison were childhood mates. They had developed a bond of friendship right in middle school which was still persistent even after all these years. Perhaps that's why both of them decided to go to the same university. When they made the choice of the university, they also made another decision. They rented a place together in Moscow, which fell near their university. Right after becoming roommates, they welcomed a third member in their residence, which was a triple story house. Zana Kernoodle was 20 and had a lot of dreams, just like Kaylee and Madison. They were living their best life when their assignments, the instructors, and parties at friends' places were creating the most anticipated memories of university life. It was the night of November 12th when Kaylee decided to hang out with her mate Madison at a sports bar near their campus. After that, they went to a food truck and shared this bit of their life on social media using Twitch live streaming. They finally reached the apartment at 1.56 a.m. When they returned, both Kaylee and Madison made calls to 3 a.m. Kaylee had called her ex-boyfriend almost seven times and Madison had called her boyfriend three times till they finally slept at 3 a.m. On the other hand, Zana was having a fine time with their boyfriend Ethan Chaplin at a Sigma Chai party. It was fun and the couple lost track of time until it was 1.45 a.m. when they finally reached the apartment. As it was already so late, Ethan decided to stay at Zana's place for the night. The couple had tired enough to sleep, so they took no pains and slept immediately. They were on the second floor of the house while the two besties occupied the third floor. The ground floor fellows had also slept by 2 a.m. It was like every other night for them, yet things were going to get dark with the arrival of the next morning. As the morning of November 13th approached, the mates on the ground floor thought about checking on the mates on the second and third floors. As they entered the second floor, they were horrified to find that the walls of the room were splattered with blood, and Zana, along with Ethan, were dead. It seemed that someone had repeatedly stabbed them, 
In a panic, they thought about chucking on the besties and the scene was horrendous in Kaylee's room too. Both of them were dead in the same manner. The mates called 911 at almost 11.48 a.m. Soon the investigations began. The early forensics revealed that the killings had taken place in the early morning hours of 4 a.m. Some defensive wounds on the bodies suggested that the victims tried to resist yet remained unsuccessful. Alongside that, Idaho police received 19,000 tippings altogether. Nearly every friend and neighbor was questioned and DNA sampling started. A strange occurrence happened when the police were going through DNA profiling. In the light of the tippings received from the neighborhood, they found the presence of a white Hyundai Elantra. The footage from the area revealed that the Elantra was in the area right at the time of the murders, and many witnesses also testified to the presence. Finally, an edge was there to hold. So the police took help from the FBI and searched for the owner. Shockingly, the owner was a 28-year-old PhD scholar, Brian Koberger, who was studying criminology as a major and belonged to the Washington State University at Pullman, Washington. The strangest fact was that his campus was barely 10 miles away from the neighborhood of Idaho where the murders had taken place. This was indeed a huge discovery. The FBI arrested Koberger from his parents' apartment in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. According to Moscow Police Chief James Fry, it was the DNA profiling which made Kohlberger the prime suspect in the case, though they have not yet revealed deep details on how they were able to find out Kohlberger's DNA within the house or the potential motive behind the murder is still not publicly revealed to date. There are still a few speculations and evidence which shed some light on the potential motive. As I have discussed earlier, our emotions play a key role in determining our choices. So what do you think? Why would a person be interested in studying criminology and to be more specifically, criminal psychology? Well, because an individual really wants to see the perception of a criminal. Understanding the perception of a criminal and experiencing them on your own are two different things. It seems that Kohlberger had a deep interest in understanding the psychology of a killer. This is supported by the fact that he had already pursued his master's degree from DeSales University in Pennsylvania. During his degree, his interest in understanding the mindset of a criminal gained strength. According to a specific resource, he had also attended classes of Dr. Katherine Ramsland, who herself is a criminal psychologist. Her expertise deals with understanding the crime from a criminal's point of view. Doesn't sound creepy? I mean, it's okay if someone studies a discipline out of interest, but taking a deep interest in getting insights into the criminal's mind is entirely bizarre. Now, if it doesn't sound too strange to you, then my next piece of evidence is surely going to shock you. Right when Brian was conducting his master's research, he posted something too creepy to be researched on Reddit. Research participation needed. Hello, my name is Brian, and I am inviting you to participate in a research project that seeks to understand how emotions and psychological traits influence decision-making when committing a crime. In particular, this study seeks to understand the story behind your most recent criminal offense with an emphasis on your thoughts and feelings throughout your experience. In the event that your most recent offense was not one that led to a conviction, you may still participate. Additional surveys are included after the open-ended section as to best understand your unique traits. This study should take about 15 to 20 minutes to fully complete. In a Reddit post made by the pseudonym of a criminology student, which is allegedly believed to be posted by Brian, he poses a very intriguing statement as he says that he wants to hear out the story behind the recent offense from his participants. Now, if you would ask me, I would immediately run away from such research where the researcher is actually interested in finding emotions leading to the crime. He further uses the words unique traits in this post. This literally sends chills down my spine. Even if you are not an expert psychiatrist, it will take two minutes for you to guess that the person posting this might not be in his right senses since he believed that the traits inducing someone to commit a crime are unique and need to be kept in mind. One Reddit user who opened up the survey states that he was utterly shocked to find the questions like, why did you specifically choose this victim over the others? And did you prepare before committing that crime? 
Now that's something downright eerie. If this has to be believed, then it's possible motive behind the homicide of four students. Even in many forums, people generally agree to the fact that this could be a result of a twisted criminal experience and that somehow Kohlberger was keeping an eye on the victims for a long time. Though Moscow police chief has negated any such ideas as he believed that the arrest is just a beginning and much work is still to be done. This statement indicates that the police have not yet discovered whether he knew the victims or not. Yet, the series of strange tales associated with him are ever increasing. One of his classmates at DeSales had also reported that she had an intensive yet somehow uncomfortable demeanor in the classes as much of his focus was on the nature of the crime and the approach of the criminal behind that. Many other classmates and friends report the same thing. His interest in crime deepened day by day, which sometimes appears to be a bit strange. Kohlberger was also a teaching assistant at the University of Washington and was known to be a very strict grader, with a lot of arguments to offer to the resisting students. Wait a minute and read this statement once again. It's normal behavior from a grader, but what his students recall seems disturbing. Some of his past students reported that his mood alternated quickly if he couldn't find a piece up to the standard he had expected in mind. Doesn't that ring some bells? When do we usually get resisting and irked? Obviously, when something doesn't go according to our assumptions. It seems that Kohlberger was trying to understand the motive of a criminal mindset from every possible lens. And when something appeared less perfect to him, this made him annoyed and defensive. Another thing, which is still troubling me, is this extremely calm and composed demeanor during his arrest, as well as his appearance before the Pennsylvania court. Believe if you are innocent and still pushed into the first degree murder of four people, you know that your entire life is on the verge of ending? The normal reaction would be extreme resistance. One would do their best to knock at every door for justice. Instead, what I have seen in Kohlberger's mouth till now is very composed expression. It seems as if he's not afraid of the consequences. It also sounds eerie to say this, yet the composure on his face looks like the composure of a person who doesn't fear the consequences and has no regrets. That's peak serial killer behavior. If you have ever seen Jeffrey Dahmer, you must be able to compare the level of calmness in Kohlberger's face with that of Dahmer. It is often believed that silence speaks volume. Maybe there is an entire backstory behind this eerie silence of Brian Christopher Kohlberger. Well, as of now, FIA is still working in association with the state police and with the start of the new year on January 3rd, Kohlberger waived this extradition from Pennsylvania to Idaho. The police are taking apt measures to move him to the Idaho court for active trial. So at the moment, there is just a scattered source of information in the right of which can one can construct opinions. Nothing can be said with certainty until the court actually declares him guilty. The hope is for the prevalence of justice and a fair trial. Well, if you feel that this case was an intriguing one, like this video and share it with all your friends. Also, subscribe to our AF Crime channel for finding more shocking tales around the world. And if you have any criminal case that you'd like me to investigate, share it in the comment section below.